Welcome everybody to the Start Select Play channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Clockwork Game Shell. So this is a modular handheld uh, that allows you to play uh, multiple retro systems. Um, so it's a really cool modular system that you can upgrade over time as new components for it are released. Or um, they suggest that you can hack this and do whatever you want with it. They highly encourage people to play around with this thing. Uh, to try and improve it. Um, so let me just show you the back here. So you've got this really cool uh, clear shell. It allows you to see inside. You can see the battery component there and the motherboard. Um, and what you got here are these little locking uh, things here. I don't know what you would call them, but you just take these off. Pretty easy. And it allow you to get inside the system. You can take a better look at it. So here we go. Just removing the over here and there we go so we've got the uh, speaker module here uh, obviously your keypad uh, you've got your battery under there your screen motherboard under there so I think the idea is in the future uh, clockwork may release upgraded versions of these modules and you can simply just take the kit apart and swap these out I guess um, so yeah, let me just put this back together and we'll turn on the system and show you the hand stuff All right, so I'm going to boot this thing up. The only problem is I've noticed uh, is the boot time on this device here is pretty slow. So you'll see that here. I may speed up the video. Alright, finally, so that did take quite a while, uh, but yeah, once you're in, uh, the user interface is really nice and easy to use, um, obviously you just cycle through all your different stuff you got on the screen, so um, I'll go through some of these, I won't bore you with going through everything, because there's a lot to go through, uh, but here you've got Tiny Cloud, um, currently on airplane mode, but once you've got Wi-Fi on, um, it'll give you all your network information, so you can connect to the device remotely from like a laptop or a phone, uh, so you can transfer over your ROMs or make changes to the system. Now I'm here, music player, I haven't tried this yet, um, I think the audio files need to be in a funny format, so I've not really played around with this yet. Uh, reload UI, so if you um, add new games onto here, you just reload your user interface to uh, see those. Let's go through with Pika 8. I've not really played much with this, um, so I'll talk about that in another video. Uh, of Doom, I've got the full game of Doom uh, running on here. Uh, originally it was the free version, but I've actually used my original WAD file to get the actual full version of Doom. Cave Story, I've not really played this, I've heard it's a good indie game. Uh, Retro Arch, um, probably many of you have seen this, so uh, it's just an emulation suite that gives you access to emulate a whole bunch of retro systems. Emulation Station, this is something I've seen on the Clockwork forums, I haven't got it running just yet, this is something I've just recently been trying to play around with, trying to get it set up on here, uh, so I may do a video on that in the future. Uh, you've got some indie games that are pre-installed with the system, Again, I haven't really played with these, so I don't have much to say about those just yet. Uh, retro Games, so this is where I keep all my emulators, so you've got MAME, uh, Game Boy, and NES. PlayStation and Super Famicom, I believe. Um, I haven't really played around with MAME yet, but today I just want to show you the uh, Game Boy emulation, the NES, and the PlayStation emulator. Um, so before we do that, just real quick in the settings here, you've got a whole bunch of stuff Bluetooth, Wi Fi, power options, um, you can update your system, um, and you can change your video driver here. Uh, so one thing I did notice when I got this is that the performance with games was not very good. There was a bit of screen tearing uh, and just the overall performance is just not very good. Um, and so I reflashed the operating system with the 0.3 update uh, which gave me access to this Lima video driver. Um, so when you have this enabled, it enables VSync, so that fixes all of the screen tearing that I initially encountered. Uh, and overall the game performance has been really good uh, since I've installed this update. And the only issue is I've noticed a couple of crashes here and there, as I don't believe it's a stable 
uh, release at the moment um, but I've actually preferred using it compared to the uh, stock firmware that was on here in the first place so definitely recommend you guys upgrade to 0 0.3 if you do decide to get one of these units uh, so we'll come out of this for now, let's go into retro games and I'll start off by showing you the Game Boy emulation so MGBA is capable of running Game Boy, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games uh, so I'll, I'll go through a game from each of those systems just to give you an idea of what this is like. So let's start with Tetris on the original Game Boy. And you'll notice that I've, um, I've changed some of my retro arch settings so I have a full screen uh, here when I'm playing Game Boy. So it originally had the black bars uh, for the original aspect ratio. I didn't really like that so I've upgraded the... Sorry, not upgraded, I've changed the configuration to get this full screen here. Uh, so let me just get into a match there, and there we go. Rain Tetris, performance really nice. And before this was stuttering like crazy, it just was not very good. So this is very close to uh, the performance of the original game on an original Game Boy. You've obviously got that lovely backlit screen, uh, picture quality is obviously a lot nicer. So yeah, I, I love playing Tetris on here. So next let's come out of this and I'll show you guys the Game Boy Color game running on here. So I'll just back out to the menu, back into the emulator. Uh, so let's do, yeah, let's do Link's Awakening for the Game Boy Color. So I've actually already got a uh, save state on here that I want to load. Uh, so to get to the RetroArch menu while I'm running the game, I just need to hold shift and click menu and it'll bring me up the uh, RetroArch menu. So I'm going to go to load state. So this is where I uh, last was playing. So as I move across the screen here, you'll see that is super smooth. Like it's buttery smooth now. Um, if you look at some videos of people running Game Boy Color emulation, you'll notice a lot more screen tearing when you move across screens like this. Um, but yeah, the 0 0.3 update with the VSync enabled, uh, th this performance is really, really good. And, um, yeah, so I think that's all I'm going to show you for this, so let's move over to Game Boy Advance. Alright, so let's show you Super Mario Advance, I love this game. And again here, performance is really, really close to uh, how it performed on an actual Game Boy Advance, so I'm really happy with this. Obviously got a really nice picture. Uh, so lately this is becoming my like daily driver, I use this thing all the time now. I have not really touched my original Game Boys at all since I got this thing. Now as you can see, that you know, the audio is really good, there's no real like... Um, Popping in the sound or any like lag or anything, and again, no screen tearing. It just looks really, really nice. So let's move on to the um, NES emulator. Um, I'll try and pick a good game to show you guys. Uh, let's go for let's go with Donkey Kong. So again on this emulator, um, performance really good again. I did notice with the NES emulator there is a little bit of pop in the sound. Uh, I don't know if there's maybe some audio settings I can adjust to improve that. Um, but it's not too disastrous, it's not really ruining my enjoyment of the game. So I'm not too bothered for now but it's probably something I'll look into in the future. Um, so let's move on to the next system and I'll show you guys uh, the PlayStation emulator. And I'm going to show you... Uh, probably Metal Gear Solid, which is probably one of the more graphically demanding games you can run on the system, I think. So let's get that loaded. So, which are the menu? Just, yep, yeah, load CD image. And as you can see, I've got a bunch of ROMs here. Uh, so, there we go. Metal Gear Solid. I've got Disc 1 and Disc 2. I've yet to get to the point in the game where you have to load Disc 2, so uh, I'll be curious to see 
if that works properly. Uh, so if, if I run into any issues out, I'll, I'll let you guys know. I'll probably do another video update on this. Um, but as you can see, it takes a while to get into the game there. Uh, but I've already got a state, so I'm just going to hit menu, load state, and continue off from rounds last play. So again, performance on this game is really decent. Uh, frame rate's very good. Sound quality is very good. Um, so we're pretty looking at this and thinking, well, hang on, how are you going to play this? You haven't got all the buttons you need uh, on on this, you know, device. So I've actually mapped L2 and R2, which is for your items and weapons, to the start and select buttons. Um, and if I do need to press start and select, pause the game. We use the codec. Uh, just hold this shift button here, press select. That works as normal, got my codec. Um, or if I come out of here and press start, obviously it pauses the game like it normally would. Uh, so that's the way I work around it for this game. Uh, I, I imagine there's probably some games where you know this is kind of going to be a problem and you're going to want to have the light key module installed, which basically uh, you swap this shell out and uh, you can have uh, a bunch of buttons sticking out in the back here. Uh, I just don't like it, it's, it's just a bit too bulky for me. Uh, so I'm trying to work around it at the moment by using these um, extra commands when holding the shift key. Um, but it's something I may revisit at some point if I run into games that I really, really need to use it for. Uh, but at the moment I'm quite happy with it as it is. Um, so I think that's enough games to show you guys. I just want to talk a little more about how I feel about this device. Obviously, I've been really happy with it. I love the performance, and uh, it's just great for playing all you know, a whole bunch of games on the go. Um, the only things that I could probably say I don't really like is this D-pad. It's a little bit mushy. Uh, it's not the best thing in the world. Um, let's see what else is there. Um, I mean, the actual like case and everything is really nice. Just trying to think of any other things I don't really like. I guess there are some things to be careful of when you uh, first um, build this unit. Um, if you're someone like me who hates getting dust underneath your screen, you've got to be really careful when you put the um, uh, LCD panel inside of here. Uh, just make sure that there is a little plastic film you can peel off uh, when, when you're installing it. So I saved doing that until the very last second until you put it inside the case and close it all up. Um, so it's just something to be mindful of. Uh, I, think, I don't know if you're going to see it on video here, but it's like a tiny, tiny, tiny little hair there, which I couldn't really get out. And I'm kind of scared to get rid of it without making more of a mess and create, get more dust in there, so I'm not really going to touch that for now. Um, but yeah, no, so this is my first video on, on YouTube, so I hope you guys liked it. Uh, yeah, definitely subscribe if you want to see more content, and just let me know down below uh, if you have any comments about this. If there's uh, you know if you, any questions you guys have about this unit, I'll try and ask, answer them as best I can. Uh, but yeah, going forward, I may do some more videos on this and uh, potentially some other gaming systems. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for, uh, for your time today, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.